throughout history, military commanders have had to figure out ways to get large bodies of men across these water obstacles to come into groups with the enemy. Now, whether it goes back, you know, Celtic coracles, the Greek galleys, Viking longships, Napoleonic longboats, or even whatever rowboats you've got lying around as they used to cross the Delaware River, or now in modern times, purpose-built landing craft. These tools do exist, and in bolt action, we have a selection available to us depending on your, your uh, chosen army nation. So, today what we're going to do is we're going to go down to the classroom and we're going to talk about a handful of these that kind of highlight the specific rules that these craft bring to the table, literally, so that it will modify the amphibious assault rules slightly and give you some alternatives to dealing with these water obstacles. So, again, okay, let's go down to the classroom and take a look at these models. All right, welcome to today's video in the classroom here. Now, today we're going to cover just a couple examples of some of the vehicles that have these amphibious or waterborne special rules, just so that you can see how they impact the game, how you would use them. Now, I don't have, I'm not going to go over the point costs and all the options and things, but I'm just going to show you, you know, how do you, I'm going to actually show you how the waterborne rules get used and all that stuff. So, or, and the uh, uh, amphibious rules get used. So let's go ahead and we're going to go on the table. I'll show you some uh, examples and we'll actually run through a couple uh, movements and you'll see what I mean. Okay, let's take a look. All right, all right so we have a couple things here. We're going to cover every, you know, examples, the lowly boat. Now, in the uh, Battle of France campaign book, they introduced boats, which will cover anything from the inflatable dinghies that uh, were used for river crossings to actual purpose-built collapsible uh, boats and even commandeered uh, boats from, you know, local boats. These will be able to carry eight models, uh, infantry only, obviously. Uh, well, I think you probably do artillery too, but anyway, eight models, and it's a you know three plus soft skin for rubber. If you pay ten, I think it's like ten extra points, you can make it a five plus to kill for, to represent wood boats. Um, they have the waterborne special rule, but they have a very special uh, movement, a couple movement restrictions. This, on the other hand, the purpose-built Higgins boat also has the waterborne. Uh, rule but it's soft skin uh, six plus it has a larger capacity it's i think it's 36 men or 16 men on a jeep um, it actually c comes with machine guns installed but that's again doesn't really matter from an amphibious perspective but again it's a waterborne uh, now this is an l yeah, it's not a, it's a buffalo but it's not the uh, ltv4 i think it's ltv2 uh, it's amphibious which means that it can actually go on water and land uh, I forget what its total capacity is for, I think it's maybe 16 men, but it, it, it's irrelevant right now. What matters is that it's amphibious and not waterborne. So, what we're going to do, let me grab a, uh, what do you call these things, uh, tape measure here. And we're just going to mark off real quick. So, let's just do 12 inches right here. Okay. So that's, a, that's our 12 inch mark. Okay. See? Now, everything that's past the uh, tape measure, this is deep water, this is shallow water, okay? Let's just do that for, for, for right now. Now, special rules, let's, each of these we uh, vehicles has their own um, rule added to amphibious or waterborne, and that's the movement uh, rule it has. Right, we're going to start with the Higgins boat, okay? Because it's a typical landing craft we all think of. Now, this has the waterborne rule, and it specifically states under the waterborne rule that it may only move in areas of deep and shallow water, being treated as a tracked vehicle. So think of it as a tank, okay? Meaning, it's treated as a, uh, that for a, uh, a tank for turning ability and speed. Unfortunately, the Higgins boat also has the slow special rule. So it can advance 6 or run uh, uh, 12 instead of 9 and 18. So back here, 
it can run 12 to get up to here, which will put it right there at the edge and you know, going from deep water right up to the shallow. Okay. Uh, if it were further away, it would run the 12, and then the next one, it could beach itself like that, uh, up again, up to halfway up. So now if you needed, let's say there was a wreck ahead of you where you'd place this, you would be have be forced to advance, so you would move and pivot, but, oops, but only going six inches. So you'd go, you know, there's your pivot, and then you'd go six inches with that advance. You can't run and pivot, so you're going to have to then run the next turn to get onto the, the beach. Okay, so that's how the Higgins boat and a lot of landing craft work. Let's go over to the regular boat. Okay, these guys are a little different. <laughs> um, this again, it has the waterborne special rule, but its movement restriction written into that is it can only move a six inch with a given advance. Um, you cannot give it a run unless it has a motor. And I think there's an upgrade you can give them for motors. But regardless, it either has a motor or it doesn't. Now this model does not have a motor. It's going to advance six inches. It's all it can do is advance. And if, again, because it's uh, waterborne, it can go up to be on, you know, beach itself, but it's going to take a while to get across compared to landing craft because landing craft is at least motorized. So your boats, you're not necessarily your best bet, but again, you use what you've got available to you, or if you're actually, you know, crossing river with the military boats, that's what you've got. Uh, most of them didn't necessarily have motors. Okay, let's look at the LVT. This is a regular amphibious type uh, vehicle that has the amphibious special rule as opposed to waterborne. Now, <clears throat> what isn't obvious in the campaign books, um, but you'll see in some books, uh, the amphibious rule has some specific rules for it, you know, what it mean, what it can and can't do. Essentially, uh, amphibious allows it to go in deep water, shallow water, but it also lets you move on land. The thing is you can't move fast in the water, okay? Now, <laughs> this is the, I'll try to get this so that you understand. Um, obviously it can move directly over, uh, forward, over impassable deep water at half speed. So you're basically only going advance, but you can't turn in deep water like you could in shallow water. Um, it cannot reverse, can't turn, ignores all the rules that oblige you to reverse or go down. It simply moves forward and advance. So being a tracked vehicle, it will move forward nine inches. So <clears throat> it comes in off the table, it goes forward nine inches. It starts in uh, deep water, so again, it can only advance nine inches. And now you're finally in shallow water. So now from here, you, go, you can actually turn you're not in deep water anymore and you can act as a tank so or you can pivot once and then advance out uh, hopefully treating this like ground remember we were talking earlier about think about your uh, you'd be in chest deep in shallow water so by the time this thing reaches deep uh, shallow water it's actually touching the ground whereas out here it's only limited by its propeller uh, that's how it can move very little in the way of steering. So, when if you do find yourself in with any deep water on the table, you're going to want to make sure when you advance into the deep water, like let's go from, let's say here, and let's say there's some land over here, and there's a certain, if there's a place you want to um, board or you want to land, like let's say you have to go here, and this, we're going to call, we're going to treat this, my phone here, as the the other point at which I want to uh, leave, I want to actually exit on the other side. And let's say this is deep water. So I can advance on here. I have to pick my, I have to point my tank in the direction I need it to go, then move forward, because I can only ever move forward nine inches to get to here. Once I'm on here, then I can turn again. But if I line up like this and I don't want to, I don't want to go here, 
I have to because I can only go straight when I'm moving across deep water. Again, only deep water. So that's kind of how amphibious works. It allows you to move normally as a tank as it's a tank or half track would be. I'm pretty sure it's a tank here. Um, I'll take a look at a duck in a second. I don't have the model, but we'll talk about a duck in a second. So you'd move on to shallow water. It's considered rough ground, but because you're amphibious, you you're able to go on there, uh, treat it as uh, normally, it, and act normally. I'm, you know, turn and grind. You can only advance on it. You still can't run because the water resistance is going to limit you a bit. But let's take a look at what a duck would do. Let's pretend that's a duck, um, because it's also going to have the amphibious special rule. Now, here's the interesting thing: the duck is wheeled. It's a wheeled truck with a, a body that has, uh, oh, what do you, call, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, waterproof, right? Normally, when you look at it, uh, shallow water, according to the rules, shallow water is treated as minus, or sorry, as rough ground. Okay, well, right there you've got a slight problem. How can you have shallow water being treated as rough ground with a vehicle that has wheels, but wheel vehicles can't go in rough ground? Well, remember, it has the amphibious rule. That means you're in water. So you can act normally as a, as a, as a it's this vehicle using an advance to get you know, through using, okay, you'll be able to move 12 inches. Once you're on land, now you're restricted to that rough ground rule. Once you're in the water, because you have the amphibious rule, the amphibious rule allows you to operate in the shallow water. Go to <laughs> Wisconsin Dells and you'll see it in first hand, and maybe even write it if you want. Okay, so that's essentially how the different um, rules, amphibious and waterborne, play against each, against the terrain that you can uh, go against. So the next video will actually be a field exercise. Where we're going to do probably, probably a river crossing. I don't know. We'll see. It might be a beach. It might be a river crossing. Stay tuned. All right. Thanks a lot. Share, like, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.